a magical new novel is out today, and it is breaking new ground in Canadian publishing. Author Amanda Leduc, who's from Hamilton, joins us with more on The Centaur's Wife. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Annette. It's lovely to be here. So let's talk off, uh, start off mm -hmm. about how it, uh, this is a game changer in Canadian publishing, a first. Mm -hmm. It's a first for Random House Canada. It is their first fully accessible book, which means that it is published in both print and audio and ebook, but also fully accessible versions at the same time. So it's been published in Braille, uh, in digital accessible ebook, and then in accessible audio as well. And this is really important to you personally because you're a disability mm -hmm. advocate as well. Yes, yes. I have cerebral palsy. Um, and one of the things that I've been noticing over the last couple of years of my disability work and activism is that when it comes to publishing in particular, often books are published in print and possibly audio at the same time, but they aren't published in Braille usually at the same time. So usually it takes a while for people who have print disabilities to access a book after it's been published. And so I'm trying to advocate for publishers and authors to really push for their books to be available in accessible versions right from the get-go because then everybody can read the stories at the same time. Right. So is it because of you that this accessibility for this book has, has been done? Well, I was uh, responsible for sort of pulling the players together. So okay. my publisher, Random House, and Nels, the National Network for Equitable Library Service, and the Centre for Equitable Library Services in Canada as well, um, all came together as organizations. And I sort of brought everyone together, but they did all of the work in terms of making the book and uh, making sure that it was available for publication, and I'm so grateful. Okay, La now let's talk about the story itself. It is magnificent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank so what's you, it Annette. about? You're welcome. It is, um, it is sort of a, a love story, apocalyptic story, fairy tale. Uh, it's about uh, the world has been decimated after a meteor shower, and it's about a group of survivors who come together in a city that is sits in the shadow of a mountain, and the mountain has a lot of superstitions around it. There's lots of things that the city folk are un, uh, unsure of when it comes to the mountain, and we find out in the course of the book that there are centaurs as well as other magical creatures that live on the mountain, and one woman in the city named Heather in particular who has uh, a particular connection with the centaurs who live there and so it's about her connection with them and how the city and the people in it come together as survivors to really try and move on from this catastrophe that has hit them. Right it's kind of the earth reclaiming itself too. Yes, yes. Uh, after the catastrophe, the earth is, there's lots of plants that are growing a lot larger than they normally would. And sort of, yeah, there's a sense of the earth coming back um, from the brink of destruction. Mm -hmm. It's also a, a big theme is acceptance, right? Because yeah. nobody, there, there are factions within the community and, and even mm -hmm. within the, the refugees that come in, right? That don't trust each other because they're different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, and one of the things that I was, I mean, obviously it's um, first and foremost, I was just trying to tell a good story. And one of the things that really sort of became quite clear in the course of writing it was how, you know, it's very easy in the wake of disaster and things that kind of, you know, throw your world into sharp relief. It's easy not to trust people um, and, and to be really wary and afraid of, of things that are going on around you. And I really wanted to explore what happens in a kind of situation like that and see if I could push back against that narrative a little bit. Okay. Book also very important because it's, it's written in what's called own voice. So you mm. talked about the main character, Heather. She has cerebral palsy. She does, yeah. And so you're right, own voices is a term that is used. Um, it was started in the disability community, but it's also used for other marginalized communities now as well. And it refers to a book where um, it has been written by an author or um, a, a particular person who shares some of the main traits of the main character. So in this case, it's a character who has cerebral palsy like myself um, and own voices um, book about racialized identity would be written by someone from that racialized identity. Okay. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and it's, it, there's there's more of a push in publishing these years to really seek out those voices and, and give opportunities to people who maybe haven't had them before. In the disability community particularly, there's a lot of um, disability books out there that aren't necessarily written by people who are disabled themselves, so it's something that we really advocate for publishers to pay attention to and really uplift these, these okay. voices that are trying well, to tell their own stories. Congratulations for the way this book is breaking through. It's published, Thank it's you. out today, and on top of that, it is a magnificent story, as I say. Amanda LeDuc, the author of The Centaur's Wife, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.